So the first thing in Amos 4, 6, the Lord says, but I gave you also. Now he's speaking to a people, his people, who have been disobedient. Now they're still being religious. We covered this really well in the last couple of weeks. They're still being religious, doing religious things, but they are being disobedient to the heart of God. So he said, because of that, I gave you also cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all of your places. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. What's he doing? His purpose is to get them to return, right? Now, what does it mean by cleanness of teeth? They got no food to eat. Okay. They, they, you know, you brush your teeth and you eat because you're getting food in them. <laughs> what he's done is he's bringing famine upon his own people. But he made a way. You see? But he, Jesus, answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. And Jesus said to them, the Jews, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. And he who believes in me will never thirst. John 6, 35. So you're not, you're not going to go through that famine if you have a right relationship with, with the Lord God through Jesus Christ. He said it will not allow the righteous to hunger. Okay? That's his way. And then he goes on to talk about drought. Okay, furthermore, this is verse 7 and 8. Furthermore, I withheld the rain from you while there were still three months until harvest. Then I would send rain on one city, and on another I would send not send rain. One part would be rained on, while the part not rained on would dry up. So two or three cities would stagger to another city to drink water, but would not be satisfied. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. But Jesus made a way. Jesus answered and said, now he's talking to the woman at the well, right? He said, everyone who drinks of this water at that well will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. John 4, 13 and 4. And Jesus said, and this is a prophecy through Isaiah 55, 1. Ho. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. In John chapter 7, Jesus said, Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. God has made a way. Mm. You know, all of these things, you see them? He yes. is doing them for a purpose. To get them to return to him. A broken and contrite heart is what he's looking for. That we would return to him. And when we're not, what he's doing is trying to make a path to entice these people to come back to him. And this just goes on. It says, and then you know, the, the storms and pests to devour. That's in verse 9. Plagues, and he talks about plagues and warfare in verse 10. Destruction of entire cities in verse 11. All with one goal, to get the attention of the people and cause them to repent. And yet, over and over comes the same statement. Look at these things in, in, in the verses we just talked about. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. If you're not in a right relationship with God the Father, I promise you, he will do whatever it takes to try and get you back into a right relationship with him. Because he doesn't desire that you perish, but that you come to everlasting life. All right? The purpose of Amos is a prophet. He's a prophet who, who doesn't desire to be a prophet, but he is fulfilling the call of God. To expose you see? their iniquity. To expo that's what, to expose the people's iniquity. That's what it says in Lamentations Chapter 2, verse 14, that God sends the prophets to expose the iniquity of the people 
So that they would repent. So that they would repent As we and return to him. to him, okay? Now, listen to this and, and prayerfully consider it. If you do not believe that the Lord directs the path of the lightning, as it says in Job 36, 32, if you do not believe that it is the Lord who raises up a stormy wind and that lifts up the waves of the sea, check Psalm 107. If you do not believe that he can also calm the stormy sea, as he did on the Sea of Galilee with his apostles, if you don't believe that he can choose to withhold the rain or send the floods, if you don't believe that he can harden the hearts of rulers to bring them down against his own people, or if you do not believe that he can humble or destroy the enemies of his people, if you do not believe that nothing is impossible with God and that regardless of what's going on in your life, he is at work in you both to will and to work his good pleasure, not necessarily yours. And if you don't believe that our God brings forth both good and at least seeming adversity into the life of a believer, you are not a Bible-believing Christian. Is a comfort to my soul. Your word is the truth that sets me free. Your word is a light into my path. Your word is a lamp into my feet. Help me.